Why do you make your art? To give me structure and meaning. I mean, that, that is my meaning. Before I was an artist, I didn't do anything. I was a free-floating sort of drug addict criminal, really. <laughs> so, you know, that gave me all so my life. It gave me a purpose and it, gave, and it gave, helped me to search for questions and ask myself difficult questions. So it's, it, there's a, uh, thinking is a very important part of your art. I yes, think. contemplation. Focus. So would you say it's almost a meditative Yes, it is a mental process, yes, absolutely. That, that comes through the work, I, I see it myself, I guess. I, I definitely do. I, I can't judge that, only, only the people who see it. So, uh, judge, there's I, often, I'm too close there's to often, the work to yeah. judge whether it has any real depth. I think it does well. You've got I think the often, audience, you know, yeah. they determine that, really. So, uh, what's the general process you go through when you make your art? I work on the floor. I don't think when I work, it's purely intuitive, I think it's a purest expression of the unconscious mind, I think, and then I become aware of its meaning later on. Um, I work, sometimes I work rapidly, it can be a very slow process. Uh, uh, layers at all? Or? No layering, lots of layers, building up layers, water down acrylic, lifting out with my hands and Do you find working um, so on the floor? That's why I have to work on the floor so it dries. Do you find working on the floor helps you get more close uh, to the art physically and uh, metaphorically perhaps I suppose in terms of the actual way that you're expressing and the uh, mark making etc. I think actually having physical contact with it, pushing my fingers into the paint and my palms and leaving that, that, that impression show through and working over the top of that. Yeah. Like in an in, in indexical basically, that indexical trace which I like. I think that, that physical contact makes it So is that similar to um, you have like Pollock, I mean, yeah, or the because well, Pollock humans. often talks about the Oriental uh, painters and how they wanted to get yeah. closer. And would you say uh, this might sound a strange question? But is there a sexual component, therefore, to your work in terms of the way that you? Uh, Some people create have read a sexual sort of content into the work. I don't think so. No, I think it's absent from my work. Basically, so it's more I spiritual think it's analysis of structure. Yeah, and reorganizing the figure and trying to reinvent either the crucifixion or the traditional portrait. Okay. Um, when did you know that the moment that you needed, you wanted to be an artist? When I was 18 years of age, I saw a documentary on Picasso, and I saw Picasso's Weeping Woman mm. in 1937, and I thought, that's what I would like to do. I didn't understand it, and yeah. I didn't know what Cubism was, I didn't know anything about Picasso, but I thought, that's what I must do. So is that and about three years later, I went to college. The idea of the... I was still drawing around that time, but it was, yeah. that was the moment. The, the the uh, Eureka moment, I suppose. Yeah, and then I bought a book on Van Gogh and read about him and his very intense life. And yes. So, so I'd like not Van Gogh, obviously. I don't want to be Van Gogh, but I just mean, I don't live like that, but I mean. In terms of the, the intensity of how you live your life and your art and how seriously you take it, I suppose. Yes. Which is commendable. All right, um, thank you much, Uda. Um, I hope. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. But what media do you, do you work in? What is your main media? Mainly uh, uh, charcoal uh, for drawing and then watercolour or oil painting. What is your favourite medium? Which, which is your favourite? Yeah, which, which one? I don't have a favourite really. 
It's like one of those three. One of those three. You know. Uh, what motivates you as an artist? Why do you make art? Right. I am going to quote from us, John Ruskin. There is a strong instinct in me which I cannot analyse to draw and describe the things I love. Not a reputation, nor for the good of others, but a sort of instinct like that for eating and drinking. Excellent. What is the process you go through in the studio? How do you begin making art or any piece? Whether it's an installation or a painting? How do you begin? I keep going backwards and forwards, going in and out, and then uh, once I get going... Do you start work immediately, or do you no, concentrate first? No, that's what first? I mean, I keep you, going so in, and then I go out, um, because uh, where I work now is uh, very near what is in my... So you don't, have to, you don't have to create a mindset for waking up? I do, yes, because I keep going in there, and then I come back out. Okay. I'm going to make a cup of tea, and then I go back in again, or then I've got the garden, I walk around the garden, I do okay, everything okay. but... But then, eventually, I start, and then once I start, it's very, very difficult to start. So, so what do you... I don't know, it just... Would you describe it as an intense process? Yeah, well, yes, but once I get going, not so much. Once I get into and do you experience it, And do you experience intense emotions when you make art? Um, or is it very neutral? From observation, yes. When I do it from observation, then very intense. Um, and I, it's very diff I find it difficult to recreate that intensity when I'm not doing it from observation, actually. So when did you realise you wanted to be an artist? What was the moment? <laughs> if there was one particular moment. No, there wasn't one particular moment. So was there an artist that inspired you to be an artist? Mm -hmm. At any point when you were younger? No, it, um, I've always... I've always been interested in art. And have you always considered yourself always, being an artist? No, actually I haven't. So, uh, um, when did you become one? Sorry? When did you become an artist then? Well, that's it, I couldn't define There's that. There's no, just define, okay. I can't, no, well, I've always been half do you, do you, an artist. Do you feel like an artist? That's the important question. Well, no, I feel that's all, that's what I do. I do art. I can. I still find it difficult to say I'm an artist, but I do art. That's what I do. That's what defines me now. As a person, as a human yeah, being, you, yeah, are, at, you at, make at, art. Now, I, yeah. Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> that was Hi. So here we have Monica Tobo, tunnel member. Uh, first question: What media do you work in? I right. started as a painter. Yes. But it's ventured into different mediums. I like to be more three-dimensional, so the work and the viewer occupies the same place. And also I play on different mediums, depending so on the subject So you're a multimedia matter. artist, like a lot of artists are today. Yes. You're working many different mediums. Okay. Why do you make art? What does it mean to you to well, be an artist? I think I chose art because I'm not good with repetition. And art is pretty much the only subject that allows you to constantly reinvent. find new questions. I mean, then, yeah. So it's this not knowing of something that creates experimentation, and then you find the next question, so you never hide yourself out, I guess. How do you make your art in the studio? What's the process you go through? Well, usually it's a long thinking process before. It's a lot of contemplation. Before it begins, but. Uh, I realize now that I mainly paint people, so I search for my subject in different media, be it newspaper or the internet, and if I find a connection, then I do a couple of drawings, a painting, and that sometimes transcribes itself to a three-dimensional work. Do you go to the studio just to think sometimes, just to contemplate work and not actually do anything? Yes, or to read. Yeah, it's a good place to think. So when did you realize you needed to be an artist. What was the moment? Well, I think it was around 24 or something. 24, okay, that's quite Yeah, I, uh, I always liked Was there any one moment? Was there any one artist? But it was more like you? I made a decision to consciously say that I'm an artist. I was reading a lot of Henry Miller back then. Yeah. And Henry Miller said that the way to become something is just start saying that you are. So yes. I started to say that I'm a painter, so then I had to make paintings to prove it. Yes. So 
So that was the first step. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Michael. Thank, Thank you. you. Here we have Chris Gobber, one of the co-founders of the tunnel, and he's going to talk about his art. So, Chris, what medium do you work with and why? Um, predominantly, I work <coughs> with acrylic and paint in terms of my painting work. I've worked with oil in the past, um, not for a while. I might return back to it, possibly, but I work with acrylic because I tend to work quite fast. It's quite instinctive. And how many years have you worked with acrylic? Uh, Ten now. Okay. Um, 10 years of intensive uh, effort yeah so I started off in a garage really before I started off was painting my parents garage and uh, in a mental hospital for a bit that's okay why for a bit. that's why I, it's very hard Bruce sorry not being fl flippant I'm just saying no, no, no. Uh, it's true there is a art group I mean I like the buffet and a lot of the yeah. kind of French artists who took what the art of like the insane was perceived at that time and then transformed it into well, more of a bad version of contemporary inspiration. Okay. So, how do you make your art? What's the process uh, that you go through in the now, studio? Now, it used to be different, but now generally I'll uh, go through sometimes months of intensive sketching and then translate those into paintings. So, so when you go to the studio, do you start work straight away or do you contemplate first? Do you sort of set the mood? You, you make you marks first and build it up on top of layers. So basically, like, I think of, uh, like this piece here, or this piece here even, yes. I, wasn't, I had a general idea of the image and the, the subject in mind, but I would build, 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 build. So essentially, I'd, this figure emerged out of a lot of kind of toying around with paint and just, uh, that's what I've been oiling it actually, the, the yellow is oil, you can kind of tell because it's got like a whole slick surface. But yeah, so I sculpt with paint essentially, so very thick layering of acrylic paint, a lot of layering up, a uh, lot of quite expressionistic mark making I suppose, and build out of the building, the f form emerges and then I kind of, I mean sometimes I do charcoal sketch to get the, the base layer down. So it's a very intuitive, like my work, like Pollock in a way, yeah, you think a very intuitive it's process. and... Physical, yeah, very physical. physical your your work is very visceral, like mine. I mean, yeah. I try not to make it too laboured, but there is a labour to it. It's very, of course. It's kind of very uh, physical work, I suppose. I enjoy that. I enjoy getting messy. I really like I'm covered in paint most of the time. Yes. When did you know you needed to be an artist? What was the moment? What was the epiphany? When I was, saying, oh, when I was <laughs> mentally ill in a hospital, and just the only way I could get uh, help not be bothered about that was to just make marks. So that but in a way, so like a form of therapy in a way? Yeah, partially. It's not fully, it's not just that. I do try and make serious art as well. But then I think people distinguish too much between, I think all artists use art as a form of therapy in one way or another. Mm, I do agree, yes. I mean the self is a constantly evolving, morphing, shifting thing for anybody. I mean it's the self, in fact, I mean consciousness in itself is constantly shifting, constantly being reshaped shifting. by the environment and by you and by your friends. Oh yeah, quite so. And it helps me just reflect to myself. Helps me reflect on my life decisions. Help me reflect. I mean, I'm kind of interested. I've been watching this video. I watched this video a long longer about uh, new masculinities in art because obviously I'm a dude, I'm a man. So a lot of my work also deals with um, perception of self, but also with perception of women, how I perceive sex and sexuality, how the complexities of those things and how you know, how they relate to, in terms of uh, image making and icon making and uh, you know, relate to art history and yeah I mean there's, there's, a, there's a bit of uh, sometimes there's a violent subtext in my work purely because um, violence is something I like, think is on the new masculinity thing it's something that exists but life is violent. Life, life is full of violence. Well, exactly. Emotional and physical. What I'm doing is reflecting. You can't escape it. I mean, reflecting life, especially now the contemporary age where media is, uh, we kind of have we have violence on television. We don't really experience it that much in real life. When we do, it's very jarring and strange. But um, we experience yeah. emotional violence. It's like in a similar way to bacon, I suppose. I've yeah. had that obsession with where that comes from and mm. how to actually uh, portray an imagery. Right then, that's the interview concluded. Thank you, Chris. Cheers. So, what medium do you work in? 
Normally I do paint mainly, so it would be acrylic on canvas, but I do also try to push a little bit the boundaries and maybe get more woven installation and, and other you know mixed media. But I think traditionally I feel more comfortable at painting or, or So you're predominantly a painter, not really a mixed media, or you're mainly a painter. Yeah, I think saying? It depends. I think I have a lot of projects lately where I do tend to mix things and create audio pieces or some, you know, mixed media where maybe I'm using photography and video. Uh, but painting's the medium you feel most comfortable in, would you say? Well, I don't think that's maybe a fair statement. I think that when I don't have a specific project and I'm just, you know, feeling the urge of doing something artistically, I have the tendency to go and, and paint or or, uh, or draw, but when I think of a project and I have a specific, uh, you know, idea, I will try to explore this in different ways. Like for example, with this piece and, and collaborating with you guys, yes. uh, but also in other projects that I've done in the past. Okay. So, why do you make your art? What motivates you? It's a very difficult one. It's a very think, difficult question. I think everything that you do has maybe a different motivation depending on your moment in your life or on your situation and how you're feeling. I think at this stage, my motivation is to try to, whoever comes and sees the piece and the audience that we have, to try to maybe suggest an, an alternative or maybe of, of a way of living or a way of impacting things around us or maybe even just expressing something that is inside of me that I want to communicate with the people around me and um, that would be more or less. So what is your process? How do you make your art? You know, when you're in the studio, how do you, what process do you go through? Again, I think every project is very different, no? There is sometimes where you have an idea and you know exactly what you want to express and then you will find your ways around it. Sometimes you will start with uh, with reading a quote or a book and then developing pieces or sometimes you create a piece and you doesn't know you don't really know where it comes from and you just create the things uh, from from you know just the other way around. I do enjoy a lot the, the research piece of when you're creating something and I think that um, the process is from for me sometimes more important than maybe the final piece. So it's an intensive process or a contemplative one? It will depend. I would say generally it's more intensive than like contemplative. But uh, yeah. Okay. So when did you realise you wanted to be an artist or was the moment? If there was one defining moment? I think I've never well maybe since when am I considering myself an artist, that would be maybe a question. I don't okay. know. I don't think I am maybe that confident yet to consider myself like an artist as such. And, but I have always been very creative and I've always enjoyed doing things and you know I've So how would you define yourself? If you don't know, consider yourself to be an artist, what would you consider yourself to be? Well, a creative yes. thinker, just a maker? Yeah, maybe just a, a creative thinker. I think I'm very I think I still have so much to learn and to do and I think I don't know, well I mean the good thing about being an artist is that it's a it's a process, right? You, yes. Yeah, we're all very young, we still have a lot to learn and a lot of things to do artistically. But I think that um, I've always felt you know cur felt curious about creating things or doing things and, yes. and speaking to people and expressing this and playing around with stuff and creating so, no, what media do you work with? Well, mainly I work with tiny little notebooks and a black pen. It's, uh, it's like etching. It's, yeah, yeah, it's very, very accurate, precise pen, but it brings me all over the place. I've done this for many years because I like just doodling. I'm a doodler, really. So, what is your main mode of expression? How would you describe yourself? Uh, well, I guess I call them semi-automatic, so I create all these semi-automatic, so it's a form of semi-meditation where I go on this kind of a journey, or they bring me on a journey, because I've got a lot of these little characters, and I keep on popping out from the top of my pen, I don't know where they come from, but they bring me some nice and interesting places, and they help to keep me somewhat sane. What motivates you to know? Why are you an artist? What's well, I don't have any option because these guys need life and without me they feel, I mean I'm sure other people would be able to create them but they come out of this particular pen and I could get done with this pen and this guy and it's a guy in Battle Green Roads that is my particular station of these pens and he, they're actually somewhat magical in the sense that it's always from these particular pens, these little characters 
pretend to come to life, but I don't know who they are and what they don't know what they represent, and I don't know why they're so insistent on being on this particular planet. But maybe they want to go over to another planet. There is talk of them moving on. So, what's your process? How do you make your art? I mean, you don't have a studio, do you? So you work at home. Yes, yeah, so, so. I, yeah, I kind of work everywhere now because what I kind of because I spend a lot of time traveling and I spend a lot of time selling art in the streets and yes. particularly in Spain. So that's why I like to have my art in a small bag at all times. So I kind of so you most, sketch everywhere. You sketch yeah, in the train, cafes. in a cafe, yeah, bar, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You can't basically like that. Quite a few years. So when did you realise you wanted to be an artist? What was the, uh, the moment? moment? Yeah, well, moment. since I was a when child... When did you begin, basically? It was a painting that I did when I was a child of a man running with a dog, or a child running with a dog after him. And I've been running ever since, through a forest, alone. The dog is still after me. The dog is catching. The dog is still there. I can still hear the dog, very, very close to my heels. I can keep moving. Excellent. Thank you, Noel. Thank you. So, what media do you work in? What is your main medium? Uh, my main medium is uh, sort of pen and inks and a little bit of watercolour. I, like I like a lot of solid lines as well as sort of pens, or sometimes pens, but yeah, mainly colour pens. Why do you prefer that medium? Um, I don't know, it, just, it allows me to make like very definite marks and to get things down really quickly as well. Like, do you mean you see other Yeah, 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 sort of. It's just something that happened, you know. I remember when I was a child, they used to use like big, massive marker pens to draw these like sort of almost South Parkish characters. <laughs> I suppose they just stuck with me. I tried pencil for a while. But... <laughs> what do you make your art? What motivates you as an artist? What motivation? Yeah, yeah. Just, just generally. Um, a mode of expression which uh, allows me to not use words. You know, I don't think words are great, um, but you can't always depict everything as succinctly. You know, like it's a horrible. Cliche, but paint, uh, picture paints a thousand words. Whatever. So, yeah, it's a mode of expression, it's language. <laughs> yeah, it's a very direct way of communicating. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, you know, everybody always sees something very different in my artwork, and it's, it's nice to be able to show people that and be like, no, this is what's sort of going on inside my head that I can't describe <laughs> already. How, how do you make your art? What's the process you go through when you enter the studio? What? Uh, yeah, so. I do really, you know, that's the crux of it. It's very, very rarely that I'll have a, an idea before I start drawing. You know, it's the, the ideas come out as the form arises. So I'll uh, just put pen to paper, start randomly, some sort of line, normally start with some sort of symmetry. So it's, it's like it's an unconscious process, which like, yeah. I'm thinking completely. Uh, you know what, as much, as, as, much as that makes sense, like while I'm drawing it, I'm seeing the forms come out, I'm having words come to me, like, oh, this is that, you know, like, yeah. th this piece, for example, is obviously a self portrait. And, it's probably a bad example for what I'm describing actually because I thought I want to do a self-portrait first but I had no idea it would come out like that. You know? <laughs> uh, it's, it's not your standard sort of self-portrait. <laughs> yes. So when did you realise you wanted to be an artist? Was there a specific moment? Was there was it a series of things? or uh, yeah, it's a, it's Was there one artist that inspired you to be an artist? Sure. But there's a, my fondest memories of being a child are drawing. Like I, I remember sitting in front of the TV, just copying stuff off of there, or drawing my favourite wrestlers. Yeah, <laughs> or That's football familiar. kits and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just I remember that so vividly. And um, I guess that just sort of, sort of continued. But when when I went to school and college and I did art, I, I loved it. It was a great time. Uh, especially loved like talking with my teachers and stuff because I thought they were the class weirdos, <laughs> really. But that also meant. That, alongside the sort of pre prescriptive method of teaching art in college, meant I ended up not really putting attention into it and got a D and fell out of love with art a little bit. So when I went to university to study history, I, there was just a moment really when I was about 19, I think, and I, I just started drawing again one day, and I've, I've sort of since that day not been able to not draw. <laughs> so yeah, I think when between the age of 19 and 21, I really found my love for it again. So a few years later, and I'm still, still going. So. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me. <laughs>